2 Timothy chapter number 3. I'm going to preach where we live. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. It is good to see you tonight. Enjoy the singing. Enjoy the testimonies. Enjoy the prayer time. Join fellowship for church. You just can't be being around God's people and being in God's house. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Very familiar verses to our hearing. This is what God put on my heart. So you hang with us tonight and uh, hopefully be an encouragement to you. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. We'll begin our reading verse number 1. The Bible says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lust ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the good testimonies, the good singing. Thank you for allowing us again to be in the house of God tonight. Now, I pray over the next few minutes you would help us, you'd sit down amongst us, You'd speak to our hearts, you'd edify us and enlighten our minds and encourage us towards the good things of God. Uh, And I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd instruct in righteousness and, God, that you'd be glorified. Uh, And I do pray that the saints of God would find help and strength in time of need. Uh, Put a hedge about us. We know that uh, the sorry, no good devil would like nothing better than to distract and divide and take away from the service. Uh, So I plead the blood of the Lamb over this place and pray that, Lord, you'd help us. Uh, And God, you know what we stand in need of long before we ever was. You knew this day would come and knew what we'd need. Uh, So I pray you'd just help your people tonight. Uh, Help us to bless your holy name. And God, I pray you'd get honor and glory. Uh, Use this unworthy vessel. Bless the reading of thy word. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' holy name. We ask these things. Uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. In verse number one, you've heard this referred to. You've heard me refer to it many times. Uh, It says, This know also that in the last days uh, perilous times uh, shall come. Didn't say perilous times might come. Uh, They shall come. Uh, Can I say we are living in the last days? Uh, Now, uh, I want to caution you. uh, The Apostle Paul thought he was living in the last days. Uh, Peter thought he was living in the last days. Uh, Some 2,000 years later, we are living in the last days. Uh, All the prophecy that has had to be fulfilled uh, in order for the Lord Jesus to take his church out of here has been uh, fulfilled. Uh, We're living in the last of the last days. Uh, Now, I'm not saying Jesus is coming tonight, but he could. Uh, I'm not saying he's coming tomorrow, but he could. Uh, uh, He may not come for another 15, 20 years, uh, But mark her down, we are closer to his coming than we've ever been before. Uh, But notice what it says, in the last days, perilous times uh, shall come. That word perilous means dangerous. And we live in some dangerous times. I don't even have to talk about ISIS. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you got to be fearful to put your kids on a school bus nowadays. Uh, you got to be fearful going to a ball game nowadays. you got to be fearful going to a shopping mall. Uh, got to be fearful going to a grocery store. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, aren't you glad for the hand of God? Without his hand, there'd be total anarchy. Uh, but I'm talking about we live in dangerous times. Uh, uh, not even dealing with ISIS. Uh, how many times on the news, somebody driving down the road and somebody shoots them. Uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, driving down the road and shoots into a house and uh, uh, hurt somebody. Uh, I mean, we live in dangerous times. Uh, uh, there's uncertainty across this globe. Uh, uh, we live in perilous times. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, uh, these, th- uh, these times are dangerous uh, because of what is outlined in these verses. And I want you to pay attention for a minute as a way of introduction. We live in dangerous times, first of all, 
because of people's attitudes. Uh, because of people's attitudes. Uh, uh, there are things that are happening today uh, that when I was a young man didn't even enter in the minds of people. Uh, now they're the norm uh, because of the attitude of people. Uh, uh, look, if you will, in verse number two, look at some of the attitudes uh, that we see in our day which fulfills the fact we are living in the last days. Uh, it says, For men shall be lovers uh, of their own selves. Uh, I've never seen a day like this day where people are so selfish. Uh, 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 used to, people were concerned about community. They were concerned about country. Uh, they were even concerned about the globe, the world. Uh, 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 people would go across the street or down the road to make sure their neighbor was uh, uh, doing okay and their neighbors had their needs met. Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, there was a sense of uh, uh, reaching out beyond your life and beyond your world, uh, but not today. Uh, uh, the philosophy of the day is uh, my right to my claim to myself. Uh, I mean, it can be no longer, uh, uh, I mean, no longer uh, argued. The fact, just look at America. I mean, in America, people don't care about their children or grandchildren or generations ahead. Uh, everybody wants everything they can get for themselves today. Uh, it's no accident that in the last eight years, uh, our national debt has went from one and a half trillion uh, to nearly eighteen trillion dollars, uh, and the big reason for that uh, is people are lovers of their own selves. Uh, they want free cell phones, free health care, free everything. 60% uh, of Americans are living off the government today uh, because people don't care about anybody else, uh, only themselves. Uh, and uh, it's just, just uh, a small instance. You go uh, in the education system, people are, are selfish. You go into the uh, workplace, people are selfish. Uh, uh, they don't care about their coworkers, they just want theirs. Uh, and all across the globe, it's uh, getting more and more prevalent. Uh, it says that the attitude of people is that they will be lovers of their own selves, covetous. You know, used to people were content with what they had. They were thankful for what they had. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. But today what people do, uh, uh, no matter what they've been blessed with, they want to drive down to Triple Crown and they want everything that somebody else has. Hmm? We, uh, we want to go out there and see what Brother Brian's driving so we can drive what he drives. Hmm? We're covetous. We're not thankful we have something to drive. You know, we want something that's uh, European. Hmm? We want something that's sporty. Uh, Jeff's got a big 1,500cc motorcycle, but he wants a Harley. True. I got one honest person in the whole church. I only know that because we were talking about that for church. I didn't even know we had a bike. Huh? But that's the way we are. We're covetous. We'll see this big old house sitting out there and say, boy, that's what I want. But we don't realize that where much is given, much is required. We don't realize with the big house there's a big tax lien. We don't realize with the big house you've got to pay a housekeeper to come clean it because you can't clean it all yourself. Uh, we don't realize uh, a, a big yard. Uh, you need a big mower uh, and you need big time to mow it and keep it all looking good. Uh, uh, we don't realize uh, all the problems and all the heartache and everything else that comes along with it. Uh, we just want what we want. Mm. Uh, crack up my boy. Every time you turn around, he's talking about having a big 2,500 diesel truck. I'm thinking, who's going to put gas in the thing, boy? He don't think about that. Uh, who's going to keep the insurance up on it? They don't think about that. They just think about what they want. That's the day and age we live in. Uh, they're covetous. I don't have time to look at all these boasters. Ain't everybody bragging? I do, people are full of so much hot air today. Huh? Brag, brag, boast, 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 brag, brag, brag. We live in that day and age. huh? Uh, they're proud. You know, pride's one of the seven abominations that God hates. We live in such a proud age. I mean, even a bum on the side of the road holding up a sign says, we'll work for food. There's some work he won't do for food because he's too proud. He'd rather you give him a dollar. Hmm? We're just proud. Uh, I'm not throwing off on folks that are homeless because they've had everything taken away. I'm talking about bums. There's a difference. Uh, 
blasphemers. I mean, so many people blaspheme the things of God today. All you got to do is go on a job and talk about being in church on Sunday and people make fun of God, make fun of church. Watch some of these TV shows come out wanting to discover the real Jesus. Well, get in the Bible. You'll find him. No, they want to tell you he had a wife and that he had children. They had all that. No, they're blaspheming the Holy Scriptures. Uh, we live in a day of blasphemy. Mm. Mm. Disobedient to parents. Boy, isn't that where we live today? Uh, we took took the right to discipline children out of schools and now they're taking it out of our homes but they don't have to take it because a lot of parents don't exercise it in the first place and children are disobedient and when I come up no meant no now it means one two three three and a half four huh I told y'all, it was a couple years ago, we, Miss Annette and I was at the grocery store, and this kid was, I mean, this kid was showing out a brat because he wasn't getting the M&Ms or whatever he wanted and everything, and I mean, it was a screaming and a hollering and a spitting and a spewing and everything. And I said, I'd read like this, I said, you can borrow my belt if you want. She looked at me like I was the criminal. She's raising the criminal, not me. Huh? Listen. I didn't get many whippings when I was little because I didn't need to. Or the ones I got stuck. Are you listening? The Bible says spare the rod, spoil the child. Now, I'm not talking about uh, beating your children. I'm not talking about abusing your children. But God gave them a nice tushy spot on the backside uh, uh, that you, uh, if you explain to them why they're getting the whipping uh, and you do it the right way, uh, 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 you break their will, then they're going to hug your neck and they're going to thank you for it. And they know you love them because you correct them. Uh, and when they grow up, they're not going to spit in your face and they're not going to disappoint you, my dear friends. Uh, we got them disobedient to parents. Parents have no say anymore. And when they do say, children laugh at them. Mm -hmm. Can I say it's the attitude of the day? That's why things are dis so dangerous. Unthankful. We've never seen a day and age where people aren't thankful like this day and age. Boy, I, I could spend all day there. And unholy. We live in a day where righteousness is almost a thing of the past. Where things that are used to be esteemed as reverent and holy no longer are I mean you can tell somebody you go to church and you're a church goer and next and they, they say oh that's good and next word out of their mouth is a four letter word they have no respect for that anymore I mean I know I'm old but I come up in a day and age where somebody dare didn't, dare didn't throw their beer cans in the church lot let alone party in the, in the parking lot I remember even the lost people respected the man of God now church members don't even respect him. Church members call him by his first name. Don't call him Brother Doug. Just Hey, Doug, just like he's just a good old boy. huh? Man, when I was a young man, if you called the preacher anything but by his last name and attached something reverent to it, you got your teeth knocked out because that was a man of God. But we live in a day of un where everything's unholy. The church house, listen. I'm just, I'm here, might as well just camp here for a while. When I was young, you didn't bring water bottles and stuff into the sanctuary of God. This was a sanctuary. That's where you did business with God. A man didn't wear a ball cap to the house of God inside the sanctuary. That didn't happen. Uh, a deacon's life will knock your head off. This is the way it happened. This is, this is the house of God. This is a place that we come to worship God. This is God's house. This has been hallowed His name. This is to be a holy place. This is to be a place where God deals with His people and where He deals with sinners. Uh, and uh, you come into this place reverent or you don't come at all. I mean, that's just the way it was. I know I'm old school, but that's the way it was. Huh? You came, you gave God your best, not your leftovers. See, it's dangerous today because of people's attitudes. And the attitudes are found in verse number 2. But not only because of their attitudes, it's dangerous because of people's actions. Look at verse number 3. It says, without natural affection. 
never seen a day and age where people aren't compassionate like today. These two people had compassion for people. They saw somebody that was hurting. It was compassionate towards that person. They tried to help them. Uh, if they saw somebody that was sick, they was compassionate toward that person. And at least they'd pray for them. But we live in a day and age where uh, people have no natural affection. How many times do you have to hear Young ladies having a baby and leaving it in a dumpster, leaving it in a toilet. I've heard of them being at a prom and have a baby and leave it in the bathroom and go back out to the dance floor and dance. How can they do that? It's a fulfillment of this passage of Scripture without natural affection. There is no affection in this world like a mother's love for its child. It's the closest thing that we have to the love of God in this world. Without natural affection. I should have looked up the statistics. I said this this morning. I wonder in America how many children are growing up in a single family home. Quite a few. And then I wonder in America how many grandmas and grandpas are raising the children. Because mom and daddy don't care about them enough to do what it takes to raise them themselves. It's because we don't have natural affection. Sad. Huh? We're living in dangerous times. When people don't have a heart for other people, that's when you get riots. That's when you get racism and prejudice. That's when you get uh, anger and hatred towards somebody because of the way they look. A lack of natural affection. And I say, well, times are dangerous because of actions, not only natural affection, truce breakers. How many peace treaties need to be signed in the Middle East? Well, they break every one of them. How many treaties has our country entered into with Russia and Iran and North Korea and all, only to be broken? Dangerous times because we're truce breakers, false accusers. Hmm? Anybody ever had a lie told on you? Hmm? Uh, you you work a job and and you just try to work hard and live right and do right. Somebody gonna lie on you on the job because they're jealous. Hmm? They will. They'll accuse you falsely because you want to do right. Hmm? false accusers you're in good company they accused Jesus falsely the night they tried him hmm? incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good I'd never embarrass somebody but we've got a person in our church that was working a job showed up on time worked extra worked hard did their best uh, 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 but they had a manager that was a lesbian that uh, uh, hated the fact this person went to church and this person loved God this person made a stand for God uh, and this person did everything they could to despise that person and get rid of them. Not because he's a thug, Brother Todd, not because they stealing time from the company, not because uh, 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 they were doing a bad job, but because they were a Christian. Despisers of those that are good. We live in dangerous times because of people's actions. It goes on to say, uh, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You know what's wrong with America? That verse right there. America's gone insane for sports. Now, I love sports. You know that. But I mean, we will take off work to watch a basketball tournament. I don't know how long they've been skipping church to watch NASCAR and golf and football on Sundays. Hmm? Lovers of pleasures. People will skip the things of God in order to go fishing, go hunting. Huh? It's, it's, can I just, I'm already here and I, I, I ain't even got to the message yet. The message get better. Hang with me, all right? Do you know how many times in the 20 years I've been pastoring? Deer season, I'll have them say, Preacher, 
I won't be at church Sunday. We only got so many days of deer season. I'm going to be out in a deer stand. They won't come to church, but you know what? They don't take off work. If that's so important, take off work. Don't take off God. And I've never known anybody that took off on Sunday to go deer hunting and got one on Sunday. You think God's going to bless that? Hmm. Huh? Well, gun season's only for a few days. Well, take off work. Save some of the vacation days. Take off and then go hunting in if it's important to you. Oh, no, i got to spend time with the family. You need to spend time with God and God's family. Mm. But that's where we are. And see, I know I'm not supposed to preach this way because you make people mad. Well, if you love things more than you love God, you've got a problem worse than me. Are you listening? People's actions, people's attitudes show we live in dangerous times. So not only that, the times are dangerous because of people's appearances. Look with me in verse number 5. Having a form of godliness. You know what a form is? A form is a, a structure that's hollow. And they give the appearance that there's something but they're empty on the inside. Are you listening? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And can I say the appearances of Christianity and religion uh, are dangerous. Uh, there are a lot of uh, so-called churches. I mean, they have a building that looks like a church. They have a steeple on the top of it. They have a, a, a sign out front of it. They have services scheduled uh, where you can come and meet. Uh, and uh, if you're just passing by, you say, that must be a church. Uh, they give that appearance, uh, but they deny the power thereof. Uh, once you get inside, you find they're empty. Uh, they have nothing to offer that will sustain the soul. Uh, they have nothing to offer that will lead them in ways of holiness and righteousness. Uh, uh, they are empty inside, Brother Todd, because of the second part of that verse. They deny the power thereof. Now that simply means denying the power thereof is not saying no to the things of God. It is saying, I reject the very things of God. I don't want what brings the power of God uh, I want to give the appearance I'm for God and of God and by God, but I don't want the things that God has set forth. You go to these places that appear to be a church and they don't have the book. They're not of God. They've denied the power. They've rejected God's word. And if you reject his word, you're rejecting him. They deny the old paths. Jeremiah said, walk therein. That's the good way. You'll find rest for your soul. Uh, they say we don't want that old archaic religion. Uh, we want something newfangled. Uh, uh, something that uh, uh, pleases our flesh. Uh, uh, something that causes us to be energized. Uh, uh, we want something that tells us how good we are. You go to some of these places they'll have a rock band and the people inside are jumping up and down working themselves up in a frenzy. That's not a church. That's a disco. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, you go to some of these places uh, and they'll have a seminar on how to help you with your finances. Uh, well, you need a seminar on that, go to Malachi chapter 3. That'll help your finances. Uh, you just do right by God and God will do right by you. Uh, uh, you go into some of these places uh, and they have Christian aerobics, whatever that is. Uh, and you go to some of these other places uh, and they have all kinds of things, coffee, donuts. Uh, they have uh, video games for the children. Uh, uh, they have this event and that event. Uh, you look at their church calendar and they got something going on every night, but God's no where to be found uh, come for free Wi-Fi no I'll come for Jesus mm. they put on a good appearance but they don't have the power of God look in verse number 7 it says they're ever learning never able to come to the knowledge of the truth not of a truth of the truth. I remind you in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. They're ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. His name is Jesus. We live in the information age. We live in a day and age uh, where if you want to know something, uh, uh, you're without excuse not to know it. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 you got uh, most people in here has got a cell phone where you got internet access. Uh, you can pull up Wikipedia. You can find out uh, how many spots a crocodile has on its back. I mean, you can find out all kinds of things uh, uh, just there at your hand. Uh, you don't even have to go to the library anymore. They're almost obsolete. Uh, I don't understand why Boone County keeps building them. Nobody goes to them anymore. Uh, we live to where you've got all the world's information right at your fingertips. Uh, uh, and you can find out all kinds of things. Uh, uh, people are ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth uh, because they don't want him. He says, seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. But they don't want that truth. So all this in mind, the dangerous times because of people's attitudes and actions and appearances. This is what I want to preach on for a few minutes tonight. I'm preaching on living right side up in an upside down world. Living right side up in an upside down world. Because this world's gone crazy. I mean, this certainly doesn't represent the country and the world that I grew up in. I mean, I grew up with, with, with shows like uh, uh, Gunsmoke and Andy Griffith and, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you, you turn on TV now, and there ain't nothing resembles that. I, I mean, uh, I grew up in a wholesome area. I grew up in an area where you didn't have to lock your door at night. I grew up in an area where a kid could get on his bicycle and take off all day, and you didn't have to worry about whether or not they's coming home. Uh, I grew up in a day uh, 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 where it was a simpler life and a slower life, but it was a blessed life. Uh, 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 but hey, this day doesn't represent that. This world's gone upside down. You know what? I, I, we didn't have to worry about terrorism when I was growing up. I mean, the only terror you had to worry about is if you told mom and dad no when they told you to do something. Now, that, you get some terror there. Um, but listen, this thing's gone upside down. And it's a mess. But we can still live right in an upside down world. Uh, now, the only way you can successfully live right in this insane, dangerous world, you've got to do several things. First of all, one must sit under Bible preaching. You're never going to live right in an upside-down world unless you sit under Bible preaching. Bible preaching is what God chooses uh, 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 to help people to live right, live righteously, soberly, godly in this present day and age. Uh, you know what Bible preaching to do, Brother Jeff? Uh, 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 you come in here and you sit down under Bible preaching on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Uh, uh, what Bible preaching does, doesn't matter if uh, Brother Todd's preaching on John 3, 16 or if I'm in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Bible preaching, uh, I'll show you where you're doing good, where you're doing right, where God's pleased with you, but it also might show you something in your life God's not pleased with. Uh, you're not going to get that from Joe Osteen telling you that every day is a Friday. Uh, but if you sit under Bible preaching uh, and you come wanting to hear from heaven, uh, uh, God's going to show you uh, uh, where he, uh, he's pleased with you and where uh, you're doing all right, where you're running a good race. Uh, but he also might show you some areas in your life uh, that you need to work on and concentrate on. Uh, it's an amazing thing uh, how God can give one man one message uh, and it speaks to a whole house full. Uh, uh, no matter what you have, need of. Uh, God's able to take uh, uh, this blessed old black book uh, uh, and uh, under anointed preaching uh, and show you your need uh, and show you uh, uh, what he desires out of your life. Uh, you're never going to live right in this world unless you're sitting under Bible preaching. Hmm? Can I say? There have been a lot of times the preacher just get to reading and God starts speaking to my heart. He hadn't even got to the message. And God said, this is what you need, boy. Oh, I thank God for that. You're not going to get that sitting on the lake. Hmm. The only way you're going to live right side up in an upside down world is sitting under Bible preaching. I didn't say sitting under Bible exhortation. I didn't say sitting under uh, Bible conferences. I didn't say sitting under group sessions. Uh, it's going to take somebody who's got a backbone like a saw log uh, and a get up and preach what thus saith the Lord. Uh, 
That'll cause you to want to live right. That'll inspire you to get out of your muck and mire. And that'll inspire you to get out of the, the dumps and the gloomy doomies. And that'll inspire you to go out and do something for Jesus. Uh, Bible preaching will cause you to live right side up in an upside down world. But not only that, if you're going to be successful living right, you must submit to the Spirit's leading. You must submit to the Spirit's leading. I said this this morning. When I was a young man, a teenager, there were some things my dad told me I thought he was crazy. You know, when you're young, you don't think like people in their 40s and 50s think because you think you already know it all. I was like that. You know, now I do know it all, but back then I thought I knew it all. Huh? Anybody like that? Yeah. There are two things that my dad, I, if I heard him say it once, I heard him say it a thousand times. When I was young, I heard him say these things. And when you're young, you think you got plenty of time. Hey, you think you got plenty of time. You know what's going to happen? You're going to blink, and you're going to be old and fat like us. <laughs> it happens. Uh, might, God might bless you and keep your hair, and you don't look like him. Huh? This is what my dad said. The first thing he said, he said, buy all the real estate you can buy because they're not making any more land. Well, when I was 17 years old, I didn't care about buying real estate. I wanted a car. Uh, and I wanted it loud and fast. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't care about land. I cared about tearing land up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, missed the mark on that. I wish I'd have bought some land over the years, uh, especially in this area. When used to, you could buy it for about 5,000 acres, and now they're selling it $40,000 a lot. I'd like to have, you know, about 150 acres right here right about now. That'd be all right. Huh? Never bought the land. Huh? Didn't buy it. Missed the mark. You know what he told me? If I heard this story once, I heard it a thousand times. He said, he, he said, he said when, now, when you was a baby, there's always something bad when they start out when you was a baby. Because then it kind of looks like you was the problem. I was just a baby. And when you was a baby, he said, I had the opportunity to buy all the $20 gold pieces that I could buy for $30. He said, but you was a baby, and you needed milk, and you needed special shoes, and you needed this, and we didn't have it. I was going to school and working, and we didn't have it for me to buy a gold piece. He said, so if you can buy gold, buy gold. Well, I didn't buy any gold. I don't even have gold in my feelings. Huh? Well, I wish I'd have bought some gold somewhere along the line. Huh? You say, what are you doing? How many times do people have to come to church and hear the Spirit of God through the preacher say, you need to do this, you need to do this, you better do this, you better do this, you better do this. How many thousands of times uh, has God tried to tell you uh, to gird up your heart, uh, uh, to protect your mind, uh, uh, to do this, to walk this way, not to walk this way, and you go and you go and you go and you think you're going to live forever, you think you can handle it only to miss the mark of God. Uh, you want to live right, you better submit to the Spirit's leading. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, uh, you're not under the law. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Romans 8, 14. Uh, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Uh, you cannot live right in an upside-down world unless you submit to the Spirit's leading. Unless you submit to the Spirit's leading. Unless you sit under Bible preaching. But thirdly, you're going to live right side up in an upside down world. You're going to be successful with that. One must shun the flesh. There are some things that seem natural to you. There are some things that make sense to you. There are some things that are logically logical for you. But if it's generated from the flesh, by the flesh, for the flesh, it'll grieve the Spirit of God in your life, and you won't live right side up. Can I remind you there's pleasure in sin for a season? 
And I already read you where the flesh and the spirit are contrary one to another. And the flesh never leads you to do spiritual things. The flesh leads you away from spiritual things. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's why there are people that are saved, uh, but they have no peace and they have no spiritual life because they've been walking in mind of the flesh. Uh, uh, the Bible goes on to say, uh, verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Uh, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're going to live right side up and upside down world, you've got to shun the flesh because if you're in the flesh, you cannot please God and you'll not have the blessings of God in your life. Uh, can I say, fourthly, if you're going to live right side up in an upside down world, you must have a solid prayer life. You cannot hit and miss in your prayer life and live right. Prayer's where the power comes from, but prayer's where that intimate relationship with God is developed. Now, we know that Daniel prayed three times a day. You may not have three times a day to pray. I understand we live in a 175-mile-an-hour you know, life. We're running constantly. But you better have a time where you can steal away and get along with God and pray. Uh, you may not be able to have the same time every day, but you better have a time every day where you can meet with God and pray. You've got to have a solid prayer life if you're going to live right. Nothing else. Just get your mind off of this world for a little while and talk to God. But if you're going to live right in this upside-down world, you've got to have a relationship with God. And that's what salvation's all about. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with God. See, when we come together, this is about worship. And worship is a direct response to how our individual relationships are with Christ. If we don't walk with Christ every day, we can't come in here and worship. You've got to have a solid prayer life. And I'll say this. You're going to live right in this crazy world. You need to be secure in your own Christianity. There are people who apologize for being Christians. Why? The Bible says we are a, a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. We're not in this, uh, of this world. We're in this world, but not of this world. We are, not, we are above the rudiments of this world. I mean, God saved us and had made us joint heirs to the throne of Christ. What's to apologize for? That's, I'd apologize for being American before I'd apologize for being a Christian, and I'm not going to apologize for being American. I love America. I don't love everything she's become, but I love America. Huh? You cut my arm open, it's going to bleed red, white, and blue. Hmm? Love America, but I love God more. Are you listening? You've got to be secure in your own Christianity. Listen, I don't want to offend people, but if my love for Jesus Christ offends people, they'll have to be offended. I really don't care what other people think about me for being a Christian. Amen. It don't bother me. But right. James, I don't go home at night wringing my handkerchief saying, Oh, I hope I didn't offend anybody tonight because I told them I saved. Really don't care. Right. Well, I hope they're saved too. And if not, I hope they've seen something in me they desire so they can get saved. Now, I'm not going to apologize for being saved. I'm not going to apologize for being a Christian. I'm not going to apologize for going to heaven. I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not going to apologize for, for the fact that, hey, I don't have to party on the weekends, and I don't have to uh, uh, do a lot of wicked and seedy things in this life in order to get through life. I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm living an abundant life. Jesus come to give us life and life more abundantly. I don't have to. I have the time of my life just every day walking with him, coming to his house, worshiping with his people. Uh, hey, I'm just getting practiced up when I get to go to glory and go to the house. Are you listening? I'm not going to apologize for that. You have to be secure in your own Christianity. Listen, we're independent, fundamental, walk right, talk right, spit right, Baptist. I got a real problem with independent Baptist churches saying they need to take Baptists off the, off the church so they can get a crowd. 
We're going to believe the same doctrine. What are you ashamed of? Huh? Do you realize how many of our Baptist forefathers were slaughtered during the Dark Ages so we could have a church today? What are you ashamed of? I'm not ashamed of who we are. Do you, you realize in the Old Testament they had to set out an ensign? Let everybody know what tribe uh, uh, children of the, of the children of Israel they were. The Benjamites had to have a Benjamite flag out. Uh, Manasseh had to have Manasseh out. Uh, Dan had to have Dan out. Uh, we just got a shingle out there that tells what we believe. Now, there's a lot of people who think they know what we believe. Never, never opened a Bible, never came to a Baptist church. They say, oh, you're that no fun crowd. I'm having time in my life. I have fun everywhere. And if I'm not having fun, I'll make something fun of somebody and then I'll, I'll have a good time. But I start to say this. We're independent Baptists. This local church, Christ is the head. We make up the body. He's the great shepherd, good shepherd, chief shepherd. We haven't under-shepherded the pastor. And as long as he's following the good shepherd and as long as the people follow the good shepherd through the under-shepherd, God blesses and he has blessed so I really don't worry about what an independent Baptist church down the road or down the street or what they're doing because that doesn't bother me. Because we're doing what God tells us to do around here. But we got a bunch of independent Baptists. If you don't do it like they do, and if you don't have the preachers they have, and if you don't sing the songs they sing, if you don't, then you ain't right with God. Listen, I'm a little bit more secure in my Christianity than that. Really don't care about their church. I don't care if who we have and what we do offends them. Really don't care. Because we're trying to do our best to mind God around here. Amen. Do you know how many times Baptist preachers have looked down their nose at me because we didn't homeschool our children? Now, if you homeschool yours, hallelujah. God bless you. You got a lot more patience than me. I'd have killed mine. Listen, long before we ever had children, we made up our minds that the ministry was not going to ruin our children. We didn't homeschool our children. I got news for you. Then they, then they have a coronary fit when they find out, no, we not only don't homeschool, we didn't send them to Christian school. And you're a Baptist preacher. Yep. For the last 27 years. No. We sent ours to public school. You did what? Show me in that Bible where we're to isolate ourselves. Now, we're to come out and be separate from the world, but we're not to be isolated from the world. How are you ever going to win somebody if you're isolated from everybody? Hmm? We sent ours to public school. All right. Are they perfect? No. I'm their father. That ought to settle that argument right there. But you know what? They didn't turn out too bad. Huh? I'm just trying to help you with something. You need to be secure in your Christianity. Really don't give a flip what anybody else says and how I should live. Right. I'm interested in what Jesus says. And when Jesus has told me how I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do, I'm just going to be secure in that. Because he's the one who bought me he's the one who leads me he's the one who uh, certainly has gone to prepare a place for me I'll just try to please him and as long as I'm pleasing him it really doesn't matter about anything else you see if you're going to live right side up in an upside down world you've got to be secure in your relationship with him because the bottom line is if you try to live for Christ in pleasing other people, you're going to be crazy. You'll never do it. You'll never please so-called God's people. Because no matter what you do, they're going to expect something different from you. So just live your life to please Jesus. The rest will be take care of itself. Let me say this lastly. If you're going to live right side up in an upside down world, You've got to stand regardless of the consequences. Amen. You see, Christianity has become like politics. See, they put all these poles out so they figure out which side of the fence people are leaning on so then they'll make a stand on that side of the fence. 
Well, see, that don't work when it comes to spiritual things. We're not in this thing to be politically correct. We're in this thing to be right. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. The sword that he brought, the word of God, the doctrine of the word of God, it divides. He said it would divide households. It would divide father and son, mother and daughter. It divides. Doctrine divides. Jesus told us uh, 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 to make certain that we stand on the doctrine. He said, they hated me, they're going to hate you. But he said, regardless of what comes against you, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Regardless of the consequences. A lot of people get in a lot of trouble. They want to water down the doctrine to please everybody. You're going to get in big time trouble with the Lord doing that. If you're going to live right side up, you've got to learn to make a stand regardless of the consequences. I'd rather please God than man. Now that's easy to say when you're chucking one from the, the cheap seats. That's easy to say, well, I'd rather please God than, than the government, or I'd rather please God than the, the local officials. I'd rather please God than somebody on the other side of Africa or somewhere. Yeah, it's easy to say it then. But you need to stand regardless of the consequences, even in your own home. You better stand for God. Because he holds your breath in his hand. And can I say... I'd rather limp into heaven facing a lot of consequences in this life and hear, well done thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord than to dance into heaven and the Lord sit there shaking his head at me. See, if you're going to live right in an upside down world, you've got to stand regardless of the consequences. There used to be an old song out that says you can take everything that I've got away from me, but you can't take him away from me. I mean, what's the worst can happen to you? They feed you the lions or chop your head off, you just go to heaven quicker. But I sure would rather please Jesus than the masses. And how can you sleep at night doing that anyway? You know, he's the one who gives you peace on your bed at night. He's the one that grants you sleep. I sure would rather please him. We live in dangerous times. We, do, we live in crazy times. We live in crazy religious times. We live in just, I mean, absolute chaotic times. We ought to be shot to victory. That's a good thing. That means we're, we're that much closer to heaven. God's about ready to come and take his church out of here. But until he does, we ought to live right and be right and do right that we can point others to him before he comes if you purpose in your heart you're going to live right you should again Paul wrote over there Titus living soberly righteously godly in this present age that's what they deserve to see somebody who's right somebody who's sober that means thinking right towards the scriptures somebody who lives godly because they're not seeing it in, out of a lot of people. You go around and, and just start visiting folks in this area, and everybody in here is, you know, in this area, everybody's a Christian. You know, so you're hard-pressed to find any heathens anywhere. But you just watch their lives. Brother Randy works with a guy. He'll tell you about their church, tell you about all the works they do and everything, and then the next breath he'll ask Brother Randy if he wants to go out and get a beer. Well, that's not sober and righteous and godly. Crossroads, big outfit out there on Mall Road. They just had a campaign, pay it forward. Just pay it forward. That's a popular term now. That means you do something for somebody now, and then in the future somebody's going to do something good for you. That's what, what they've really done is they've robbed that thought from them TV evangelists where you sow some seed. You sow some green seed for me today, and God's going to bless you with some more seed on down the road. No, I'm going to lose some seed if I give it to you, lame brain. You're supposed to put your, your, your money in the, in the church, not in some guy that's got his hair dyed on TV, but I'll get off on all that. 
they got that mindset, pay it forward. They had this big campaign down at the crossroads, pay it forward. And this is one of the things they said. They said, hey, you need to be good to somebody that doesn't know God, and maybe what you need to do is just go out and invite them out and take them out and buy them a beer. Well, that's real godly, isn't it? Do you ever see what God said about strong drink? It's a mockery. Hmm? Say, well, Jesus drank wine. Jesus drank new wine. New wine is what we call Welch's grape juice. It's a fruit of the vine. Hadn't fermented. Why would Jesus drink something that was intoxicating when he uh, uh, wrote down in the book of Proverbs and throughout the Bible against it? Jesus wasn't a hypocrite. Just people who want to say Jesus drank wine and go out and have one, they're the hypocrites. Hmm? Jesus was the Son of God, the Lamb without spot, without blemish. He was holy and still is. I'm just trying to help you. See, religion has gone chaotic. They need to see something that's real. They need to see something that's right. They need to see it with people who have love in their heart and a desire to shine. And somebody who just enjoys being saved. What image do you project? I see Christians, man, they say they're saved, and they, they, they look like Eeyore on Winnie the Pooh, man. They look miserable. Look like you got indigestion, not salvation. Did Jesus really save you? Well, you ought to be having the time of your life. Right. Say, so, well, I've faced a lot in this world. Yeah, but you didn't face it alone because he's with you. Huh? Well, live right. Right side up in an upside down world. 